let's continue with the chapter with the topic poultry farming poultry farming is undertaken to raise domestic fall for egg production and chicken meat therefore improved poultry breeds are developed and farmed to produce layers of eggs and broilers from meat the cross breeding programs between indian that are the indigenous species for example a seal and foreign the exotic species for example the leghorn breeds for variety improvements are focused on to develop new varieties for following desirable traits the number one is the number and quality of chicks the second is dwarf broiler parent for commercial chick production the third is summer adaptation capacity or tolerance to high temperature the fourth is low maintenance requirements and the last is reduction in size of the egg laying bird with the ability to utilize more fibrous cheaper diets formulated using agricultural by products moving forward we will now see egg and broiler production broiler chickens are fed with vitamin rich supplementary feed for good growth rate and better feed efficiency care is taken to avoid mortality and to maintain feathering and carcass quality they are produced as broilers and sent to market for meat purposes for good production of poultry birds good management practices are important these include maintenance of temperature and hygienic conditions in housing and poultry feed as well as prevention and control of diseases and pests the housing nutritional and environmental requirements of broilers are somewhat different from those of egg layers the ration that is the daily food requirement for broilers is the protein rich with adequate fat the level of vitamins a and k are kept high in the poultry feeds poultry fowl suffer from a number of diseases caused by virus bacteria fungi parasites as well as from nutritional deficiencies these necessitate proper cleaning sanitation and spraying of disinfectants at regular intervals Appropriate vaccination can prevent the occurrence of infectious diseases and reduce loss of poultry during outbreak of disease. Now let's move on to the fish production. Fish is a cheap source of animal protein for our food. There are two ways of obtaining fish. The first one is the natural resources which is called capture fishing and the second one is by fish farming which is called culture fishery. water source of fish can either be sea water or fresh water such as rivers and ponds fishing can thus be done both by capture and culture of fish in marine and fresh water ecosystems so the first thing that comes is marine fisheries india's marine fishery resources include 7500 kilometers of coastline and deep seas beyond it popular marine fish varieties include pomfret mackerel tuna sardines and bombay duck marine fish are caught using many kinds of fishing nets from fishing boats eels are increased by locating large schools of fish in the open sea using satellites and eco sounders which we read are in the chapter sound some marine fish of high economic value are also farmed in sea water this includes fin fishes like mullets bitki and pearl spots also shellfish such as prawns mussels and oysters as well as seaweed oysters are also cultivated for the pearls they make inland fisheries fresh water resources include canals ponds reservoirs and rivers brackish water resources where sea water and fresh water mix together such as the estuaries and lagoons are also important fresh reservoirs while capture fishing is also done in such inland water bodies the yield is not high most fish production from these resources is through aquaculture fish culture is sometimes done in combination with rice crop so that fish are grown in the water in the paddy field More intensive fish farming can be done in composite fish culture systems. Both local and imported fish species are used in such systems. In such kind of a system, 
A combination of five or six fish species is used in a single fish pond. These species are selected so that they do not compete for food among them, having different types of food habits. As a result, what happens is, the food available in all the parts of the pond is used. As cutlass are surface feeders, rohus feed in the middle zone of the pond, and wriggles and common carps are bottom feeders, and the grass carps feed on the weeds together these species. One problem with such composite fish culture is that many of these fish breed only during monsoon. Even if fish seed is collected from the wild, it can be mixed with that of other species as well. So, a major problem in fish farming is lack of availability of good quality seed. To overcome this problem, ways have now been worked out to breed these fish in ponds using hormonal stimulation. This has ensured the supply of pure fish seed in desired quantities. Here are two pictures of some of the species of fish that are cultured. This and the second one is this one, the cutla, silver cap and etc. The next topic is the beekeeping, which is the last topic in this chapter. Honey is widely used and therefore beekeeping for making honey has become an agriculture enterprise. Since beekeeping needs low investments, farmers use it as an additional income generating activity. In addition to honey, beehives are a source of wax which is used in various medicinal preparations. The local varieties of bees used for commercial honey production are Apis serana indica, commonly known as the Indian bee, a dora, dorsata, the rock bee, and a flore, the little bee. An Italian bee variety, a mellifera, has also been brought in to increase the yield of honey. This is the variety commonly used for commercial honey production. The Italian bees have high honey collection capacity. They sting somewhat less. They stay in a given beehive for long periods and breed very well. For commercial honey production, bee farms or apiaries are established. So these are some of the properties of the Italian bees. The value or quality of honey depends upon the pasturage or the flowers available to the bees for nectar from which they make honey and pollen collection. In addition to adequate quantity of pasturage, the kind of flowers available will determine the taste of honey. The picture here shows the arrangement of beehive in an apiary which is a very systematic manner and the second picture shows the honey extractor from which the honey is extracted. With this, I end the chapter on improvement in food resources. Thank you.